Hello everyone, welcome to Quantum Guruji. So today in this video, we are going to talk about how to do NMR calculation in Gaussian. Okay, so first of all, there are several methods to do uh, NMR calculation. I'll discuss the way how to use this, uh, uh, means how to do the calculation for NMR. Okay, so before going for NMR calculation, what you need to do is, uh, you have to perform a geometry optimization for your molecule. Okay. Suppose uh, the molecule that I have taken here is okay. So I have taken this molecule over here, okay, just for uh, NMR calculation. So the first step I have done the geometry optimization, okay. So whatever method you are using for geometry optimization, you can use the same method for uh, like same um, uh, basis set and the uh, functional for your NMR calculation, or you can choose a better one also but I will suggest uh, your geometry should be, uh, should be optimized at a good level of theory so that you will have a good geometry then you perform your NMR calculation okay so this is my uh, input uh, structure and I will show you the input how I have given for the geometry optimization so I have given the optimization using uh, b 3 lit and 631 plus uh, G star and I have also done the uh, frequency calculation. Okay, so whatever basis set you are uh, you wanted to use, you can use anything, and the level of theory whatever you want to use. Okay, so for this molecule anthraquinone, I have used this level of theory for geometry optimization. So after geometry optimization, what you need to do is you need to prepare an input for NMR calculation. Okay, so this is your uh, output geometry for your uh, you know. Uh, anthraquinone that I have taken molecule here, right? So there are two ways to take the output like uh, input geometry for NMR. One way is double click here, okay? Now you know this is the geometry optimized geometry. So what you can do, right click, go to the file menu, and here you can go to save, and you can save the input as a GIF file. Save. That's all, okay? And when you clip this. Just click on this, open with certain uh, notepad or notepad plus plus whatever. So this geometry is your, the you know, optimized geometry of your molecule. And this you'll be using for NMR calculation. This is one way to take the, you know, output geometry. And another way is, this is your output file, right? And if you see it is optimized, everything is convert, go to the result summary and the optimized cell, you can see everything is conversed. In geometry optimization as well as frequency calculation, everything is conversed with no negative frequency. Fine. Now what we'll do is open this is in Notepad plus plus. Okay. Go down. So now slowly start going up. Okay. Now you will see these are the frequency calculations. Go up. Okay. At the beginning of your frequency calculation, you will see one geometry. Okay, so this is your geometry after uh, your for the beginning of your uh, frequency calculation. So this geometry you can take for your you know calculation. So what you can do is, uh, if you are using Notepad plus plus, then you can press Alt key and click here. Press your Alt key and then you drag it. Like you can select the specific column and rows. Go to the file new and here you put these are not required so we'll click it here then you press the alt and drag it down and delete it so okay this is your uh, standard coordinates for your output from the optimized geometry and this will be used for the you know uh, nmr calculation okay so if you see this calc this uh, input and the, this GIF file both are same okay they both are same even if you want to check you see here the coordinates are 471404 if you see here 471404 so they are exactly same so these are the ways to take the you know coordinates for your uh, calculation so now you know how to take the coordinates for NMR calculation right now will uh, make an input for the NMR calculation okay so this is my input for the NMR calculation 
since uh, I am using a cluster, so I have given here memory and processors. Uh, in case uh, you are using your laptop or desktop, um, you can fix all these things. Okay, no need to put in all calculation. If you want to put, you can put it. No problem. Based on your RAM and your processor, you can put it. Okay. So here, this geometry, this input geometry, I have taken from like earlier calculation from the optimized geometry right i have given you the two ways how to take this input geometry here input coordinates so this is the same thing i have taken if you want to see so this is the uh, optimized geometry just simply you just copy this and paste it here in the nmr now for nmr calculation you need to use nmr equals to giao okay and this is the uh, functional and the basis set fine so here I have used ZIAO method for the calculation of uh, NMR and there are other methods also that you can use for the NMR calculation. There is no much difference in the calculation in NMR. You just simply need to replace ZIAO, GIAO with uh, suppose in NMR you have this CGST. So you can put NMR equals to CGST. Okay, like that you can put CSGT. Sorry. So uh, you can use these methods or you can use IGAIM method. So you can use whatever method you want to use for your NMR calculation. But this GIO method is preferred over other methods uh, for several reasons. And generally people use this uh, for NMR calculation that calls independent atomic orbital based method for the NMR calculation. And if you want to use other, you are welcome. So now this is the input. Once we have given the input, okay, now you can run your Gaussian calculation. So there are two ways. When you are using cluster, so I will make separate video how to submit a calculation in a cluster and the HPC, okay, uh, using, you know, a specific uh, script file and manual ways. Uh, we'll discuss later, okay. So right now, if you like, if you are using your cluster, so you can use this input file for calculation, okay? And if you are having just simple your uh, normal desktop system, you can open your Gaussian, okay? And you want to perform NMR, right? So this is the, your input. Drag it here, sorry. Now you just select this and drag it here, okay? Go to the file menu and see modify. So everything will be here, right? But here I don't require this number of processors and RAM, all these things because I have already prefixed uh, based on my uh, you know system, whatever I have. So I will remove this from here because what I have done I will show you. Like uh, I have to quit this window to show you that. So I will be using this. Uh, so it, you can save this and run the calculation. This is one way. Okay. Now I will show you what I have done here is in the process uh, in the in the processes. Okay, in the file menu, go to the preferences, and here you see I have given the path for the scratch file. You can select like give the specific path for your you know output scratch and all those things. And other than that, in the root section. Okay. So in the root section, you can give the, you know, you can mention like how much RAM you want to uh, put here. Okay. So here what you can do is you want to suppose put your uh, memory, uh, the RAM and your processors. So for memory, you have to use keyword M. So before memory, I will give, uh, you know, processor. And suppose I will use uh, my system is quad core. I will use four cores here and in RAM section. So see, uh, right now I'm using Gaussian 16, okay, 64 bit. And based on your, you know, Gaussian, like 32 bit, 64 bit, or Gaussian 9, and the versions, uh, like there is a limitation of putting the, you know, um, uh, memory, okay. So default in Gaussian 16, the memory is 800 MB. That is per processor, okay. That you remember, okay. So Gaussian directories require to 3 GB space for your you know executable files and swap memory is this much so okay 
so right now in my system i am having roughly around you know uh, 8 gb of ram so for processor i will give 1500 mb okay this is the way to put so once you have given this value in that um, uh, section and you just save it that's all so this will be used in all calculation you don't have to mention it in uh, you know uh, in the input file that's all so this is saved in the preferences in the root section it is saved now in all calculation this will be defaultly used okay this ram size whatever you have uh, given so that will be used per core per processor right so since i have given here four processor like four core so 1500 mb means uh, 1.5 gb into 4 so roughly around 6 gb will be utilized maximum i have given limit because my system is having 8 gb ram i have given here as a 6 gb 2 gb i have kept over for some other uh, purpose right even i can decrease one uh, processor so that some of the you know processor i will use it for some other program or uh, some other thing so this is the way to fix your you know memory and um, processor in gaussian right so once you have done this now after running the nmr calculation i i have given you how to do the nmr calculation right now once you have done with your nmr calculation now you can open your nmr file so in the results section you can go to the nmr fine now you will see this kind of nmr will come here fine i will make it a little more bigger fine so here this is the way it will come okay now suppose you want to see the c13 nmr click on the carbon and you have to use some references right so i will use tms time with high uh, tetramethyl serine as a reference so i will take at the b3 level so here at zero we are having a reference of tms and these are the uh, aromatic protons so here these numberings you are seeing right so what this numbering is corresponding to i will show you uh, go to the view menu and click on the level it will level the elements so now 11c means that is the 11c this carbonyl carbon 12c means carbonyl carbon so they are chemically and magnetically equivalent so both peak is coming here okay so this peak is corresponding to this carbonyl carbon and these two peaks are corresponding to these uh, all uh, aromatic carbons so these are numbered here 2 3 15 and 17 uh, where is yeah 2 3 15 and 17 these four carbons are chemically equivalent magnetically also equivalent so they all of them will give one peak over here in this aromatic region and other leftover carbon this 6 5 and 14 and 18 they are equivalent it will give you one peak here and again this 3 2 and 17 15 they are also equivalent the four are equivalent in and actually this and the earlier one 6 5 and 14 and 18 they are very close the peaks are very close that's why they are overlapping here okay that's how it is showing like this now what we can do is suppose you want to remove these lines and these numbers go to the properties and here you can do whatever things you want to change here you want to change the title you can change it here appearance so you want to remove this you know sticks uh, like this you can remove it suppose you want to remove the marker also so you can remove that labels if you want to remove you can remove the labels fine so this is the way you can you know generate your nmr and if you want to change the color or increase the thickness uh, just click here replace two with some other value like three okay and now if you want to put some other color you can select the color from here and you can have the color for your nmr st spectrum okay and you click on the okay and you can save this as a uh, as a data also you can save and you can plot in your excel and origin whatever way you want or you can save as a picture from here you can save as a picture so this is a vector graph it will give you and then you can generate a, a various kind of you know pictures from here so this is the way to get your nmr spectrum in question 
uh, this is for your C13 NMR. Similarly, you can proton NMR also. You can select. Okay, a reference you can select here, and this is your proton NMR spectrum coming in the aromatic region. Since all of the protons will be overlapping, so they are like overlapped and gives you a peak around. You know, in the aromatic region 6 to 10, it is like centered at around 7.9 something. Okay, so this is your proton NMR. Right. Actually, there will be so many couplings here, right? So all couplings results in uh, this form here in this uh, proton NMR. And based on your level of theory and the basis set, it will give you a specific, you know, curves slightly changed, but the values will be kind of, you know, similar. So this is the way to do NMR calculation in Gaussian. If you have any doubt pertaining to this video and the NMR calculation, put it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching the video.